Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be looking at the module Conditional Visibility. This module of changes the way your players see things based on their passive perception as well as any other senses they may have, such as blind sight, devil sight, true sight, tremor sense, or if they see the invisible. Let's go ahead and get started first with how to set this up and then we'll jump right to the player's perspective so you can see this in action. So if you enable the module right away, you will automatically see the status icons at the bottom. I do not have them though, because I'm using the module Combat Utility Belt, which removes the default ones, so I need to take an extra step. You'll need to have the same extra step if you are using Combat Utility Belt in your game as well. It's not that hard though, so let's go through the process of how to set that up. All you need to do is in the Condition Lab, create a new status for Invisible, Obscured, In Darkness, hidden, and then apply the icon as well if you desire that one. Let me go ahead and show how you can do this for one, and then you can do it for all of the others in the same way. Go ahead and click Add Row. Give your new status a name, exactly matching up with the name that we saw on the GitHub page. Copy and paste in the icon file map, and then click Save Mapping, and we should see a new status effect for Invisible. And then we just need to repeat it for all of the other ones in the same way. As a quick note, if you already have a status effect labeled invisible, go ahead and delete that one, making sure that if there are any active effects that you have, you transfer them over to the new one labeled invisible, because this will not work if you have two status effects both called the same thing. When you're all done, it should look something like this. We have our four new status effects that we've added in manually into our condition lab. So I've already gone ahead and set up my scene here. I've set some of the tokens to be invisible, some to be in darkness, some to have a passive perception required to be able to see them. Let's go ahead and jump to the player's view now and see what they can see and what they cannot in this scene here. And looking from the player's perspective, they are unable to see anything on the scene. That includes the tokens that have been marked invisible, the one that is hiding in the dark, as well as the trap in front of them because their passive perception is too low in order to see it. Let's go ahead and step on that trap and see what happens. We can see that the trap activates, the condition hidden is removed, as well as if I were to jump back over to the GM side of things, the damage would be applied to Merrick. But we can see the trap is visible to our player now. Let's go ahead and add True Sight to our player and see what they can see around after they receive the enhancement to their vision. To change a token senses, it's as easy as right clicking the token, going to settings, going to vision, and then changing them right here at the bottom. However, I'm going to set up an effect instead by using DAE. Here I have the spell True Seeing. I'm going to go down to the bottom, create a new effect, give it a name, change the icon as desired, Make sure nothing is checked here. And then underneath effects, we want to add a new effect. Go to macro.conditionalvisibilityvision. And then here, just add in the effect value true sight. And then we are pretty much done because I pulled this spell from the SRD. So all of the details are already prepared for me. And then we just need to bring it onto the character and they are going to use it in order to gain the true sight for a certain period of time. As this is a spell that can be cast in other creatures other than self, you do need to target the creature you wish to affect, and then cast the spell. Now our character, with True Sight enabled, is able to see everything that was once hidden to them. But as soon as time expires, this will go away, and then the True Sight will go away as well, since it is linked to DAE. There might be times in your game where you want to reveal something to your players without giving them enhanced senses. To do that, we're going to be using the fact that conditional visibility is applied through status effects. Since they are applied through status effects, they can also be removed with macros, such as the one that I've made here. This macro is incredibly simple. All it does is it looks on the scene for a token named Tom, and then removes all the conditions from that token, Tom. You could do something a little bit more complex than this, but this is what we're going to be using today. With this macro, we can apply it to a scroll or to a potion. I'll be using a potion today, and I'll show you how I set that up. So here's my potion, appropriately named Fine Tom. At the bottom, because I have MIDIQL enabled and I have the on call or on use macro enabled, I have this little box here, and I've just typed in the name of my macro there. And that's really all I need to do. 
other than set up my token Tom and he is right there but he is invisible to the player right now let's jump to the players view and activate the potion and see if Tom is revealed going to the top using the token action HUD I'm going to select the potion find Tom use the usage and then we can see right there there's Tom so it works in the same way for any token if the name matches the name that you give it in the macro you can reveal it to your players instantly so as you can see a very simple but effective setup there are other macros you can create for your own game if you want to be more complex such as filtering out specific conditions or affecting targets but we won't be touching on that today as a final note though if you are already using the trap macro you can add in this single line here and this will reveal the trap in the same way it was revealed before it will remove the invisibility or hidden whatever conditions you have on it all right well thank you all for listening if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below